PDX LAN has a BitTorrent jail. What do I mean by that? Well, if you are here attending this gaming conference and you fire up a BitTorrent client and start downloading an illegal torrent or even a legal torrent, they throw you into a separate segregated VLAN with no internet access. Now, after the last video that I did here at PDX LAN, I got a lot of interest about how exactly that works. So in this video, we're gonna dive deep into the Suricata BitTorrent jail set up here at PDX LAN 2023. Did you know that Crosstalk Solutions provides full network consulting for businesses of all sizes, including network design, product recommendations, and complete configuration services? If you have a network project that needs professional assistance, be sure to contact Crosstalk Solutions at the link in the description below. PDX LAN is a network gaming event hosted here in the Pacific Northwest. Back in November, I had the opportunity to visit this event and check out how they provide solid, fast, and reliable network and internet connectivity for hundreds of PC gamers across this four-day event. You can check out that video for the full overview. As part of that video, I mentioned that the admins of PDX LAN have a BitTorrent jail that they put users into if they detect peer-to-peer -peer file transfers happening on the network. And this brought up a ton of questions about how exactly are they able to pull that off. So in this video, we're gonna do a deeper dive into the BitTorrent jail setup, and I'm also going to attempt to get thrown into that jail myself. But first things first, let's take a quick look at the PDX LAN network. It all starts with a 10 gigabit fiber internet connection coming into a Mikrotik CCR 1072. That Mikrotik router is fiber connected over to a Cisco Nexus 5020 fiber distribution switch. This is actually the first year that PDX LAN is providing fiber out to all of the attendee tables instead of ethernet. In that Cisco Nexus 5020 switch, there is a mirrored switch port. It's actually a mirror of the switch that goes over to the Mikrotik router. So basically, all traffic that's going from that Cisco Nexus switch over to the Mikrotik and out to the internet is mirrored over to this 2U server. That 2U server is running two main applications, Suricata and Packet Fence. Suricata is a high performance open source network analysis and threat detection software that's used for logging, intrusion detection, PCAPs, and much, much more. In this case, it's listening to all traffic on the network and it's logging important data as events into a syslog server. The syslog events are then also being monitored by Packet Fence, which is an open source network access control system. It can provide captive portals for wired or wireless users. It has full network authentication and authorization capabilities, and it can be scripted to manage large amounts of users who need access to a network. For PDX LAN, when a user first plugs their computer into the network, Packet Fence puts that unknown user into a detection VLAN, which pops up an initial captive portal that has all of the rules for the event. These rules include no hacking, no bit torrenting, no downloading of illegal content, etc., etc. They were also sure to put in a fun note about network outages, stating that the network admins likely know about the outage before the users do and urging users not to bug them too much. They also recommend playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure if there's an outage. When users accept the terms in the captive portal, they are then moved to the main VLAN and authorized. Once you're authorized, Packet Fence now knows who you are, they know your computer's MAC address, they know which switch port you're plugged into, basically everything that they possibly need to know to control your network session. During that network session, if you initiate any BitTorrent file sharing, you get thrown into torrent jail. Now they don't distinguish between legal or illegal torrents. Any peer-to-peer -peer file transfers are detected and blocked. Once you're in BitTorrent jail, you lose all of your internet access and you're served up another captive portal that requires you to stop torrenting in order to re-enable network access. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is try to get thrown into torrent jail. But in order to do that, we need to find a legal torrent that we can start downloading here. So I'm gonna need to find that. Uh, hey, Jeff. Yeah, what's up? Do you know where I can find like a legal torrent that I can download? Uh, Linux ISOs. Oh, you know that would be perfect. At. All right, where are they? Uh, you can go to torrents.fedoraproject.org. All right, let's see. Beautiful. There you be. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, so the website's up. We're going to download a torrent. I also have a ping running over here on the side. Let's go ahead and click the first one here. 
and we're going to open it up and see what happens. Oh, and immediately, almost immediately, I got a general failure. All right, let's see if I can pop the captive portal. Try to go to google.com. So one fun fact about this torrenting jail. If you are caught torrenting three times, you're completely locked out of the network. You won't automatically go back when you stop torrenting. You actually have to go talk to the network administrators of PDX LAN in order to reestablish access. All right, here we go. I got the captive portal. We can see it's packet fence, security event, quarantine established, peer-to-peer. -peer. You have been detected using a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing application. Such software is not permitted on the network. Please uninstall the infringing software. So. I've stopped the torrent already. Let's go ahead and re-enable the network and see how long until it comes back. According to the network admins, it is supposed to take about 30 seconds or so uh, to re-establish my connection into the main VLAN that has internet access. Okay, now we can see general failure, request timed out, and you can see the progress indicator going here. They have a very similar progress indicator the first time you connect to the network. Ah, there we go. I am now getting internet access. We can see replies from 1111, and it looks like we are, there we go, back onto the main PDX LAN network. Now, one additional thing that I heard about the reason why they set up this torrenting thing in the first place is that back in 2011, they had a one gigabit internet connection for PDX LAN, which at the time was a lot of bandwidth. Like most people at home had like DSL or maybe cable connections, but certainly not anywhere close to one gigabit connection. So someone had the bright idea of saying, hey, I think I can use the PDX LAN network to download an entire season of Battlestar Galactica. Amazing show, but that prompted the admins here at PDX LAN to put up this torrent jail so that that doesn't happen again. And why? Because the event center's internet connection is the one who gets the nasty letters about torrenting, so they had to put the kibosh on that immediately. So kudos to the PDX LAN admins for a genius use of open source technology to ensure that users behave here at this multi-day LAN gaming event. If you have any questions about this torrent jail setup, pop those down into the comments below. And I wanna give a big thanks to Jeff from Craft Computing for his quick cameo in this video. If you'd like to keep this party going, I have hand-selected two videos on the right here for you to watch next. The top video is my original overview of the entire PDX LAN network, and the bottom video is my recent step-by-step -step setup guide to Cloudflare Tunnels, an excellent remote access solution that you should definitely learn.